Hello everyone and welcome to another live from the workshop. Now, it's finally something that I know a lot of people have requested and after being inspired by uh, Crystal D of the Doctor Who fan show and uh, Five Who fans fame, making her own 12th Doctor sonic screwdriver, I've decided to give it a go myself. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be building it around uh, a trans-temporal sonic screwdriver core. Now, interestingly, uh, if the Doctor Who sonic screwdriver app is to be believed, then the sound effects for the new sonic will not come from this one, but they will come from the build your own sonic, uh, which I do have a core for, but I am currently using uh, for my own audio series sonic. But if you are going to build one of these yourself, I would possibly recommend using that one, because as I said, if the if the uh, app is to be believed, then it could be more accurate than using this. But this one was the more cheaply, more re readily, uh, easily available one to me, because I had one spare anyway. So first things first, obviously in this, the LED is white. So what I'm going to do is I have a spare blue LED, and if I get it in the right place, which I don't think I'm gonna be able to. No, anyway, <laughs> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this one off and solder this one in place. So we're gonna get onto that first of all.
And here is my finished 12th Doctor Sonic. So before I take you all through it, I will just show you the features. Uh, it really only has the one, but uh, you need lights off to see it. So, unfortunately, it doesn't um, light up all the way, simply because of the, um, the uh, opaqueness of the glue sticks that I've used and the strength of the bulb, but it still does the job. It's a shame it doesn't reach the end, as I said. Um, maybe if I ever redo this, I'll uh, leave one bulb in there and I'll extend another one to about there so it lights up the whole thing. But as it stands, I'm actually really pleased with how it is. Um, I've used the Transtemporal Sonic uh, core for this. Um, I'll get onto that, but that explains the uh, odd secondary sound. But just overall, very pleased with, uh, with the look of it and how it's come out. So, okay then, lights back on. So to take you through it all, I'll break it down because it is basically in two parts. Essentially, uh, the top part um, is the, um, the actual crystal is made from uh, glue sticks, essentially. And so all I've done for these is glue four of them together and then glued one on the top. And then inside, I don't know how well, you probably won't be able to see this on camera, but basically inside I've uh, drilled a small borehole into the uh, center of the uh, glue sticks. So the LED is actually inside them, which means it, it just illuminates them a little bit more than if it was just underneath. Um, the actual switch is literally just a single piece that can come out if I'm careful. Uh, so all that is is just a piece of plastic card doweling and then I've just added in a small borehole so when the uh, core is in there that presses down and it presses on the button which lights up. So that's that. Uh, the claws are actually made from spare 11th Doctor uh, Sonic, claw, uh, Sonic uh, screwdriver claws that I had, so I've just added those on the side and then just made the rest up with um, card. This is all, ma majority of this with the exception of the, um, with the exception of the uh, glue sticks, uh, pretty much all of this is made scratch from card. You might have seen me using some um, red tubing pieces. These are actually from an old toy uh, car, uh, uh, from an old toy shotgun I used to have. They used to have little plastic cartridges that used to to go in it. Um, I literally just cut both ends off those and then uh, use those because they are the perfect. They were the perfect diameter to uh, for the rod to go in. Unfortunately, I don't know the exact diameter off the top of my head nor the specific brand of shotgun it was. Unfortunately, I can't. Um, I can't uh, give that information simply because I don't know it. But uh, I'm very pleased with how the crystal ends come out. It's got a bit of a weight to it, um, obviously, because it's the glue sticks are fairly standard, uh, fairly um, you know standard as, as they are heavy because I've had to use quite big ones. But it works very well. So taking you on, I'll just put that light down to be on the safe side. So taking you on to this side of it, essentially, all this is um, this is actually just again uh, basically the same. Uh, piece of dying. What I've actually used for this is um, the lower part uh, of the Transtemporal Sonic screwdriver uh, I've used as a base for this and obviously that's because the core fits into it and it stays in there and it's nice and rigid and it also meant that I could uh, just build bits around the additional uh, the additional piece and it just made it easier for it to be uh, structurally more sound. So again, rest of this is all just um, you know uh, card essentially. It's the same uh, backing card that I use for my larger models, um, and then it's just been painted and spray painted up basically. And it's that's that's pretty much it. It's just really a case of building it from from scratch. And then obviously once it's back together, light obviously works on there. Um, now it's worth saying that a few people have asked me how easy this is going to be for others to build. Now. Um, <sighs> I would have to say, I mean, for me, I didn't find this too difficult, but the thing is, there was a lot of scratch building in this, so I think I think it will depend on your skill set, um, and I, you know, I apologise if this is too complex for some people to do, but this was, you know, I, I didn't go into this design, unfortunately, I'm, so, I'm sorry if this disappoints people, I didn't go into this design uh, to try and make it easy for, for people to copy, I did it because I wanted it to look as decent as, as I could get it, and unfortunately, uh, at the risk of doing something that might be difficult for people to copy, I decided to get it uh, how I wanted it to look. And so I'm much more happy with that. Now, the other thing with this is, um, now I I used, the pictures that I used were the few pictures we had of it on screen and other promotional pictures of Peter Capaldi holding it and behind the scenes photos to try and get it the right scale. Now, 
If I just put, you know, if I just bring my hand in, you can see this is this is big, and I I am under no. I definitely think that my this version I've made here is bigger than the actual uh, one on screen. But so that being said, I don't think it's that much bigger, and. Even though I've made this and I'm going to keep it, I'm going to have it on proud display, I have to say, I am not overly sold on the design of this. Simply because I think it's too big and it's too busy. I would like to have seen a smaller Sonic. I mean, if I just, again, bearing in mind that this is, that this is uh, a much, this is uh, larger than the real prop. If I bring in the 11th Doctor's Sonic, in fact, if I extend it, you can see, even if, even assuming that that the crystal is marginally shorter it's still pretty i mean you know the doctor the 11th doctor or the 12th doctors didn't store their sonic in their pocket like this it was closed up so it would be smaller and unfortunately even with this cloak you know with this extended even with the crystal moved down slightly it's still a huge Sonic, and I think that's why I'm not sold on it. Is I just think it's too big. I think it's too, it's too big and too cumbersome. An edit that I have seen somebody do actually, which I thought was very good. <coughs> Excuse me. Is they took the top part of the crystal, removed all of this, and then basically put just put it here. So it was kind of like um, it was. It looked a little bit more akin to River Sonic in a way, or. It akin to the 11th and 12th in that you had the crystal was uh, surrounded by the two claws and I think that worked really well um, it's overall I have to say I do like the design of this Sonic it's a nice you know it's a very interesting very intricate very unique style but I just think in terms of size and shape it's a bit too cumbersome and a bit too busy so I'm not really sold on it um, as a as a Sonic as a Sonic itself, but I I'm still going to look forward to it, and it's still been a an amazing project to build, and I'm I'm really happy with the way it's come out. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a tickle in my throat. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I'm really happy with the way that this one's finally come out, and the way that it's come together, and I've you know, it's it's not it's not completely accurate, but as as many people know, accuracy isn't a big watchword when it comes to my customs, but. It is accurate enough for me, and it is good enough for me, and you know it does. It has all the correct, um, you know. So, core's gone out of a lot. It's the only problem I've got here is the core does turn. I should have added some kind of locking mechanism, but just generally, you know, it lights up. It's got the sounds I want, and it works really. Well. And the other good thing about um, these uh, cores as well is you have various sounds on them. So just randomly, if you hit the button four times, you have different sort of flashing noises, uh, flashing sounds and noises and things like that, so it's great building the uh, a custom Sonic around these cores because it means you have a little bit of sort of extra playability as it were and I think it, that works uh, very well. So as always, I hope you enjoyed this video, like, favourite, subscribe, share, it really helps me out a lot and I will see you all with another video very soon.